In the lead up to London 2012, Australian Olympic selectors are working overtime, choosing the cyclists who will represent our nation. A task made more difficult by the range of talented cyclists on the women's road shadow team. For the riders, the road to London has been long and arduous. Racing both at home and abroad, endless training sessions and camps, as well as fierce competition at the Road and Track World Championships, has produced a tough group of riders across all disciplines. The riders selected for the Women's Road Shadow Team had from March 2011 until June 2012 to demonstrate their eligibility to compete on the world stage. They had to meet specific performance criteria, including competing at the 2012 Australian Championships. The track team was announced recently, while the women's and men's road teams are yet to be decided. The maximum number of places that riders can qualify for is on the road, it's four. For the track, it's six. BMX, it's two. And mountain bike also has two places. And for the men, five on the road, track has eight places, BMX three and mountain bike three places too. No one would be feeling the pressure more acutely than the head coach for the AIS women's road team, Martine Barras. Martine is no stranger to high pressure situation, having coached Ryan Bailey and Anna Mears to Olympic gold in 2004. We recently caught up with Martin whilst he was in Australia preparing the squad for the lead up to London. We got the chance to put a range of questions to Martin, including his thoughts on which riders were in the hunt for those elusive Olympic places and his tips for the final squad. I mean, what, what should we watch out for with these, uh, these girls? Uh, well, you know, the, the ones that are really starting to come to the fore, the young riders in particular, uh, you know, you're looking at people like Chloe, uh, Chloe Hosking, obviously, she's the better performed rider that we've had uh, this year internationally. Uh, Tiffany Cromwell, Amanda Spratt, Shara Gillow, uh, Gracie Elvin, who's coming from the development group I was just talking about, who has just landed in Europe and is already recording uh, results. And, and if you look at the riders who are scoring points for Australia to give us a nation's ranking, these are the riders who are doing the business for us. They're all uh, 25 years or younger. Uh, mm. As a matter of fact, two of them are 25, the other ones are 20, 20. 22. Mm. Um, so that's, I think that very much reflects where we are uh, as a program. It's, mm. We finally got the young girls coming through. Uh, they're performing, they're performing whilst they're young and uh, you know, hopefully if we do our job well we keep them in business for the next uh, four, five, six, eight years mm. and they'll deliver results for us. Could you possibly give us a hint on, you, you mentioned those girls, and uh, a hint about who would be possibly uh, representing Australia? Well, you, you, realistically, at this point in time, although she doesn't have the results this year, you would add Rochelle Gilmore to that group. And um, I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, between her, Alex Rhodes, um, and the five girls that I've mentioned, there's a good yeah. chance that that's where the Olympic group is going to come from. Great. Okay, that's pretty exciting. Oh, it is. It's uh, uh, yeah. yeah, like I said, the Olympics is different to anything else we we do. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's why that's why everybody wants to uh, wants to get in. With the final team announcements due any day, we look forward to bringing you the team lineup next week. Until then, ride safe.